Hello, hello, and welcome to the world famous Watch Podcast. Today, coming from the Loom Plotters. The Loom Plotters. Oh, world yeah. famous. That, that, that's two weeks in a row we've been world famous. <laughs> that's so world famous. Yep. Wow. Yep. Mm, 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 mm. We, are, we are. We are on a roll. Um, yes, we are. Our um, listeners. Thanks to our huge listenership in uh, Uganda, Lithuania. Um, <laughs> Lithuania. Um, <laughs> no, it's really Transnistria. true. We, we have, we have, got, we're getting, getting more and more listeners. We're gaining. It's lovely to welcome. If it's your first, what, what was the first time here? Go to the back catalog. Look at some older episodes. Uh, see how silly we were uh, before today, and how smart we well, are. Well, we got more forward. serious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we interrupt yeah. each other much less now, right? Yeah, especially in that last episode. Yeah. No, I don't think so at all. Uh, we're a bit I think we're a bit you better. think so. Yeah, not all too right. much, but a bit better. Uh, so, okay. Topic today. What are you wearing? Oh yeah, what am I wearing? Is the topic my Is Pelagos a... thirty nine? Oh, I thought it was going to be one of the uh, Pagani designs. No, I only have one. <laughs> I only have one. <laughs> um, very nice. Okay, I am wearing my uh, Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch. Man on the freaking moon or whatever oh. <laughs> Archie Luxury used to say. Um, where is he? I haven't seen anything from him. Once he got everything stolen for the I, insurance Oh, scam. It's, he's still there. Is he? I haven't watched it. I think I my, think my YouTube algorithm life, has... Uh, streams. I recently yeah, I watched... watched uh, I think he, he still does also these, these paid for um, reviews of collection reviews. He basically yeah. tells people... That. Who pays for this? I don't Who know. are you gonna give me twenty dollars so that you can destroy my watch collection? Yeah, um, it's such, I, don't I don't get it. But he, he's he's a funny guy sometimes. Hmm. Um, somebody met him, and then they they were saying that uh, you know they assumed that this was an act, that this was a uh, um, persona that he plays because he says you know Archie Luxury played by Paul Pluto, the method actor. <laughs> Yeah, and he's no. They're like, this is exactly who he is. This is not a. This is his entire personality. So yeah. apparently, he's the exact same as okay. you see in the videos. But anyway, yeah. Um. So today we're talking about watches that are too big for you, because this is a question mm. that we often have. I don't know how much you have this, Ralph, because you have fairly large wrists. But me, uh, who has smaller wrists, I struggle with this quite often maybe you have issues with watches being too small um mm, yeah so but yeah for have, me my, it's, my it's, it's a, yeah yeah i, I and no and, and so let me let me jump in there and say from all the knowledge i have condensed over the decades of being with in into watches is it has to feel right on your wrist and you have to get used to the size because what you said is very right I have sometimes the feeling the watch is too small on my wrist. However, if I would wear that watch for a week straight and you just get used to that size, you are fine with it. There was... Mm -mm. No, 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 sometimes no, absolutely you do. not. For, for me, for example, a 36 millimeter watch is a normal man's size and men have worn the size for many, many... Millennia. More, more, yeah, more, <laughs> not millennia, but more <laughs> decades than they have bigger watches, I would say. Um, and it's, it's an okay size for every person, technically, right? Theoretically, yes. However, you're so used to bigger watches of 40 millimeters, 42 millimeters, these kind of sizes, at least on my wrist, um, that it takes a bit of adjustment and you have to get used to it. And once you have done that, you're okay. You, you're okay with that. It still um, has to okay, be, it's I'll still not a 34 a millimeters, right? So that's um, really tiny. I on tried those. on a 34 uh, OP mm. the other day and I was thinking to myself, wow, I couldn't for the life of me tell if this was different than a 36. To me, mm -hmm. it would be the exact same. But uh, anyway, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through a few things. I actually wore, mm -hmm. uh, so, so you said, as you said, you need to try it on, right? But the problem yes. is many of us don't have the luxury of trying stuff yeah. on. So we need to listen to numbers right yeah. it's a numbers game and therefore for this very specific um, episode i have brought two of my largest watches okay um one is what i just mentioned the 42 millimeter um C uh, speedmaster okay and the other is the 40 millimeter submariner 
Mm. And I have also brought with me my handy dandy calipers. And we're going to compare (laughs) the 42 millimeters to the 40 millimeters of the sub. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, you have to be careful. So first and foremost, Mm -hmm. let's actually look at the what I would measure, if we're going to measure um, a watch, I would go be- essentially bezel nine o'clock to three o'clock, right? On the bezel. I'm yep. not going to include the crown. I'm just going to do the bezel. I think for Rolex both watches. always does eight to two. Okay, let's do but eight to two. But it doesn't matter, sure. really. That, that's we're not thing. doing the case. We're doing the bezel. Bezel. And both of these watches, because we're going to be consistent. So 39 point... Six for the 42 millimeter speed master. Bezel. Mm-hmm. Again, Let's you are measuring the bezel, not the, the bezel. Case. Yeah. Because yeah. that's where your eye will go to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, here's the 40 mm sub. As you said, eight to two, 40.4 millimeters. Okay. Mm-hmm. So a millimeter larger on the 40 mm. Okay, so we say let's do case size. All mm-hmm. right, that would mean we have to include crown guards because if we're going to be equal, mm. we would include the crown guards of the Speedy because this is how Omega is measuring this as 42. So including crown guards, we're at 42.15. Why are they measuring with crown guards? Crown guards. I don't That's know. the question. Oh, okay. Let's measure the crown okay, guards okay. with the sub to be consistent. 43 point... Hmm. Where is it? 43.6 yeah, with crown guards bulky crown on guard. the sub. Okay. So, looking at these numbers, 40 versus 42, you would say, yeah. in your infinite wisdom, that the speedy is going to be bigger than the sub. But no, it's absolutely not. And one other thing that I have realized over the years is uh, an important measurement is going to be lug to lug, right? Yes, that's so. Lug to lug is one thing because you're um, on that area. The dial is also okay. We'll do dial as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's do lug to lug first. Uh We'll do lug to lug here. Um, Lug to lug. If I could hold this still on the speedy is going to be, without slipping off... And we're doing just the out, 47, outside... 47, Yeah, the 47, outside roughly. extremities, not from... from um, this is... This, I'm trying to find the fattest point on the lugs here. Theoretically, you should do actually from, from spring bar hole to spring bar hole, but it doesn't matter. I'm not doing case. that. Yeah, yeah, because I'm... So this is 47.6. 47.6. Uh, lug to lug, that's the biggest dimension on the speedy and and this is also you have your speedy on the on a strap or on the bracelet this one is on the forstner bracelet because the bracelet usually has also sometimes depending on what what the male end link might have an end link that protrudes a bit more and then in in you know increases a bit this lug to lug so So 47.9 for the speedy Oh, sorry, sorry, 41, 45, 46, 47, yeah, yeah 47.9 for the uh, sub. Yeah. So essentially, mm. the sub is bigger in every dimension except for one. And that one is going to be what you just mentioned, the dial size. That's another measurement that I've yeah. noticed that has affected how a watch wears. Yeah, how a watch so is on the perceived speedy, on your wrist. Yeah, of perceived, exactly. Yeah. Um, so we said uh, we're at a 39.7 bezel plus dial. Yeah. Just dial is 34.1-ish. Mm-hmm. If we put that on the sub, the subs dial, if I can just get it down to size here, is, and I'm going to tell you another thing in a moment here, mm-hmm. um, 30.1. Oh, wow. 30.1. Mm. It's very small. And that's why the sub can technically be perceived as a smaller watch. But now here's the kicker. The sub has the exact same dial aperture 
as a 36 millimeter date chest. Oh, because what? of the because of the bezel. Yeah, because of the big the bezel. The bezel is so big on it. Mm. So, um, end of the day here, um, that's kind of what uh, um, you know we want to see. Yeah, these are these are measurements here. that you can Don't. actually um, find <clears throat> on a lot of the the watches. Forum. No, um, no. Uh, ignore websites. the measurements from the watch companies. I would say go oh, okay. beyond that. You need to go into the forums. You need to look for actual measurements, as mm. I just did. Yeah. Um, because there's tons of people that are going to be measuring these things. Um, Nico from Dubai Expat Channel on YouTube, yeah, he, he always, always measures that, these yeah. things. A bunch of people do this on YouTube as well. Um, look for the measurements that you know. So all that it takes is for you to find one watch that you truly like. Yes. And then you could compare everything to that, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, this is going to be slightly longer. This is going to be slightly smaller. This is going to have a bigger, you know, uh, crystal um so this is what i would suggest to go with yeah and then the, i want to add a couple more measurements to it that actually affect as well how the watch wears on your wrist um, are you gonna say thickness there is the thickness because if it's All right, hold very on, hold tall on. thickness it actually can make a watch more chunky feeling on your wrist so sub no no we can get into this mm -hmm. as well but that's not always the case unfortunately exactly and that these these are a couple of things that are interesting the next one would be of course sub yeah. is 12.8 in mm -hmm. thickness um i have to say the sub wears much thicker than the speedy okay i don't know the thickness of the speedy i'm going to just say it in a moment mm -hmm. but i'm just telling you from experience the speedy wears thinner is that why you because we wear the submariner on a nato strap yeah, uh, no, it's, uh, I put on NATO strap because I like the NATO strap. No, but um, I mean, that holy of course hell. adds. Holy thickness. hell. I had no idea. Yeah, it's a big of a um, chunky So 12.7 for mm -hmm. the, uh, 12.8 for the sub, 14 point. <laughs> Chronos are mostly thick. Six, 14.6. Wow, that's But I just thick. said, yeah. this wears smaller, so, uh, thinner. And, this and is, the reason yeah. for this is. If we look at the side profile, huge domed sapphire, or not sapphire, uh, uh, hesalite crystal in this case. Mm -hmm. That's probably two millimeters right there. Sure. Then if we look at the side profile, it's just so many layers of stuff. Yes, and the mid that case, takes away the mid from the case visual weight. is very thin. Thin. Yeah. And then a huge protruding case back that digs into your skin. Wrist. Yeah, exactly. That you that's, don't see. That, that the sub, on the other hand... Does not have any of this. It's flat. It is entirely. It's got a flat crystal. But it has which a bit of a no protrusion on the on the bottom. Yeah, as on well. the back it does. Yeah. But if you look at the crystal, right? Yeah. There's no crystal. crystal that sticks out. Yeah. Therefore, Completely you flat. don't get that yeah. uh, reduced midweight uh, mid case mm, feeling. Feel, I feel, say. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so yeah, these so, are these are two things. You can't listen to these as well. <laughs> <laughs> right essentially it's it's and feeling. that's that's what's my my point then again it's like um you know mm. it when you see it and then I, I know that a lot of people don't yeah. have this um, ability to actually look at watches and that's why i always recommend people go to watch meetups if you have any in the in in your area um and just try things on because you would be surprised sometimes i had watches that i thought these are my my grail watch i really wanted these watches i put them on my wrist and i thought Oh no, it just doesn't yeah, look good I know how that on me, yeah, yeah. on my wrist. Because um, every wrist, I wanted to just quickly say that every wrist is different. Some people have more round wrists. Some people have more flat wrists. I have a fl big wrist and it's relatively flat. That means I can wear I don't very, know what that means. very big. I, I've wondered this. You've been saying this for years to me and I don't know what that means. Okay, so flat I, I, wrist. I, I I'm looking at my wrist. I, mean, I show flat. you. I, no I show idea. you. This is a flat wrist. Right? This is a round wrist. Flat. Oh. I don't know. My, I, I my wrist, anything. yes. So my, <laughs> my wrist this. there is more on the flat side. That means I have a, a bigger, not, I have a longer diameter. Uh, you know what I mean? Okay. I, you're, I, think, I think you're using the, law, the wrong, uh, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So the top of, my, um, so top of my wrist where the watch rests is a bit, yeah, it's like an oval shaped. Instead it's of more oval round. than a circle. Correct. So yeah. uh, that okay. I, I so I also have a flat wrist then. Yeah. Um, 
So even though I have a six and a half inch wrist, somebody else could have a circular Correct. six and a half inch exactly. wrist, exactly. thus making the top seem smaller. Correct. And, and that's that's <clears> one of the things that where, where sometimes you feel it is it depends because all our wrists are different, right? And then you, the diameter or sorry, the circumference is important. But so is to know how broad your wrist is, right? So, and yeah. then of how it's shaped. And then there's there's lots of factors that actually make it, even technically the numbers f fit you, <laughs> something else so doesn't. So I'm measuring my wrist, hold on. Yeah. 52-ish millimeters okay. uh, width-wise and compared to the height, I'm going to do a little snug, not too snug, 42. Ah, see? Yeah, you have in also height. a bit of so a flat So I have a wrist. much yeah. flatter wrist than, so I guess you would say it would be 40 or 45 and 45 would be a round wrist, an ideal wrist, right? Yes. And, and, um, and she, <clears throat> I have a friend who we, we can exchange watches. They fit perfectly to both of us, but he has a very round wrist and I have a more flatter wrist. So watches look very different on us. Um, so that's that's another thing. Then yeah, the one more thing, one more measurement you could actually throw in the wrist is the uh, throw on the wrist, <laughs> throw in the mix. I wanted to say is of course the luck width, right? Yes. That could, okay. In this case, hmm. both of these watches are twenty and twenty. Yeah. Um, but this is something that I always I was going to bring up if if Ralph didn't bring it up, um, is lug width is hugely important. Um. When we talk about lug width, both of my watches here are 20 millimeter lug width. But uh, if I had a watch, which I actually did have uh, a watch with a similar proportion to yeah. the Speedy, which was the Pelagos FXD, it was a little thinner. It wore roughly the same size. Lug to lug was a little bit bigger. Yeah. But the big thing was it had a 22 millimeter uh, lug width, which then meant you have to... 22 millimeter strap and that 22 millimeter strap compared to the 20 millimeter strap makes an absolutely enormous difference on how the watch wears um the bigger width of strap is going to make the watch wear bigger it's going to make it look more chunky on your wrist and i didn't like it and that's kind of one of the issues that we often run into is you might have the perfect watch size the perfect everything but the width of the strap makes it yeah. Not suitable for you. So now for, for the first time in my mm. life, I've actually measured my wrist now because I just went and got my calipers and I have a 50. Wow. I have a, f wait, I have to read this. It's a mechanical thing. It's 50. Mine too. 57 millimeter broad wrist. So mine was 52. And mine is 41 tall. I think mine was 42 40, tall 40 or 41 tall. Yeah. My wrist is taller than your wrist. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. My, my wrist is not that's very, very interesting, think, but yours is much wider than mine. All right. So no, it's yeah. 43, uh, 42, 43. Yeah. So, okay. It depends on how much uh, I dig in, which is, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And that's other questions. I don't know how much to dig in as well. I was trying to not dig in and just yeah. get the you know bare measurements. Um, but anyway, it, it's a very, finicky thing to find a watch that fits you um, and i have to say yeah. at some point when i first got into watches um i had uh one of my first uh watches was the tag Heuer aqua racer which was a 41 mm watch and it wore wonderful it had a 20 millimeter lug width um, i put it on a nato strap and it just wore perfectly um and then as soon as I got a replacement mm. for that watch, which I replaced that with the uh, original blue dial uh, Tudor Pelagos, that had a 22 millimeter lug width. And I didn't know what a lug width was. I had no idea. So therefore, I couldn't figure out why the Tudor Pelagos looked so much bigger than the tag, even though they were roughly the same size. And it ended up being yeah. that stupid lug width measurement. If I had it on NATO, it just looked massive. All you see is strap, yeah. essentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. It can make a big difference. And, and it's, that, that's one of the things when you have, for example, these, uh, these uh, what are they called? The Bulgari Octo, Octo, Octa, Octo oh, and Octo like Finissimo. 70 millimeter lug width. <laughs> They have very broad, they're, they're just completely 27 or 28 millimeters or something. They're very broad. And yeah. that makes, of course, a big difference depending on what kind of wrist size you have. It can look awkward. It can look... 
And to add Good. another scoop it, of crap onto it, yeah. um, taper yeah. will affect how a watch wears. A Bulgari mm. goes from 28 to like 15. Yes, it tapers like Which then crazy, yeah. looks really, really cool because you have it on the wrist and it doesn't look huge. But when you go 28 and stay at 28, yeah. it would be unwearable. Yeah, and you have so to have really, is, really tree, tree trunk wrists. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah this. Uh, so this is one of the, you know, some <laughs> of the weird stuff that I see with Panerai's. Uh, you know, I see guys with 24 millimeter lug width. I don't know how they're wearing it. Yeah. with small wrists you know it's yeah. it's tapers okay to 20 let's say yeah 24 to 20 roughly and they and have that's it. usually Still big huge. big very big sized uh, pin buckles as well the pin buckles yeah. are yeah, yeah. chunky yeah <clears throat> I, I had to i had a luminor and i had 44 millimeter luminor and i had a 45 millimeter radiomere and of course the 45 millimeter radiomere wears smaller than the 44 um millimeter luminor because i had the Luminor 1950 Marina case, and it's very thick. It just wears very chunky, right? Well, the Radiomir has very short lug to lug, even though it's yeah. 45 millimeters. The wire lugs. The wire lugs. And no it's super giant easy. crown guard. Correct. And, it, and it's it missing just the giant crown guard. Wears extremely comfortable, even on smaller wrists, which you would be very surprised of how good it actually can wear. And it was one of my so, most so, comfortable watches to wear. It's one of these where you think, "Wow, this is just yeah. incredible." Yeah. So at the end, the end, but but in in the end, you have to understand that these numbers that we're giving you are numbers that mm. we have learned kind of over the years what works with us or what works for us. So why, yeah. while I maintain I cannot do anything larger than a twenty millimeter lug width, um. Other people like twenty. No, I have twenty two with a lot of my watches, and it sometimes looks bad and sometimes it looks good for example on my blancpain 22 millimeters you know the, the the golden rose golden one i don't know why they did it but it's okay it's a leather strap it doesn't work it doesn't look out of place um then i had 23 on my blancpain bathyscaf which is sold then i have somewhere 21 i have uh, the smallest i have is 19 i think 21 i've decided mm. one millimeter you cannot really perceive no. so between 19 and 20 20 to 21 you can't really see the difference and um so i'm kind of like okay I, with that I would, but 22 is when you start seeing i would it. say 22 if it does taper quickly you wouldn't you wouldn't mind probably either because it can taper to to a you know, specific level as well. I have another thing that I hate, and that is uh, <laughs> tapers that are larger. <laughs> I, I, no, no, for me to wear. Okay. I don't like uh, anything that doesn't taper to 16 millimeters. 16 mm -hmm. millimeters, when I look at the bottom of my wrist, I want to see 16 or less. Yeah. Um, so regardless of what it starts at, right? For and that more, often to me would be okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I don't like, uh, for instance, is uh, there's a caveat. I'm okay with NATO straps for some mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. But um, bracelets, I want them to taper down. Leather straps, I want them to taper down. Yes. Um, my uh, leather strap that came on the JLC Reverso doesn't taper. I mean, it does. It goes 19 to 18. Yes. But at that point, yes, who yes, cares? Yes. Yeah. Why would you taper at one millimeter? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and I don't understand why. It looks stupid. Yeah. It looks absolutely stupid. And I don't understand why these big companies do this kind of stuff. Like, do I don't know what the designers understand? think. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's comfort. If It's it's maybe a design issue. For, for me, I've, I, I've seen that as well. When I have a watch with 22 millimeter lug size and it tapers to 20, it doesn't feel good on my wrist. I it want it also like it to at least at all. 18, right? For me. No, exactly. If me, it's 22, yeah. it needs to go to 18. Yeah, there should be a drop 16, of four. Yeah, yeah something four like that. Millimeters. There should be a bit of a yeah, So one, 19 to 18. I mean, what were these guys smoking <laughs> when they decided that this was a good idea? Um, yeah, sometimes I feel like they just don't want you to use their buckle on any aftermarket uh, strap. Straps, maybe yeah. that is it. I, I don't and know. Then you think, um, why, right? Why? Um, yeah. So Grand Seiko goes nineteen to sixteen. Mm -hmm. um, Rolex on my Explorer goes nineteen to fifteen, yeah. which I really like. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. um, my 
sub goes 20 to 16. Um, and this is, of course, down to the last link. Yeah. Uh, the clasp is always a few millimeters larger. And that becomes another problem, right? Imagine if you go 20 to 18, like my old Speedmaster bracelet used to, yeah. 20 to 18, and then your clasp goes up to 22 or 20. Mm -hmm. um, you were saying it goes to 22 with the... Uh, with the non-tapering bracelet of the Seamaster 300, right? Zero taper, yeah. 20 millimeter all the way through. And then, of yeah. course, the what's it called has to be bigger, the uh, strap. So uh, this is one of the reasons that I bought these Forstner bracelets that you hate, is I know 16 millimeters is <laughs> where I want the... Slim, yeah. There's 16 millimeters all the way through, mm. and I like that. You see here on this uh, uncle strap that I have on my Pelagos 39, the Jubilee titanium bracelet, it also has a mm -hmm. slightly bigger clasp, right? Because it needs to. If you have a Jubilee bracelet, yeah. it, it just go, goes in with a slightly bigger one because it has to wrap around it if you have this micro adjust in it, right? So. Yes. It, it just doesn't work. But that's work normal. Up. That's normal. okay. Yeah. It's a tiny bit. Yeah. So, what is it? What is it tapering to? Get your Wait. get your measuring stick out, your your meter stick, and let's see what it goes down to. Hey, Ralph has sorry, left the sorry, scene. I've just He's packed back. it away. Okay. <laughs> uh, so tell me what it goes down to. So, Not the clasp before the clasp. So just because we know it's twenty one. Last link before the clasp is sixteen. Ah, perfect. 16. Perfect. And, and then this the clasp is, itself is. Uh, 17, 17 nah. and a half. Oh, man, my eyesight is bad. Is 18 and a half. Yeah, so yeah, 18 ish. Yeah. yeah. One millimeter. So, uh, I think more this is this side, yeah. fine. I'm curious what the original one was on the. I think it's small. Or, it's slim. It's pretty slim. I think it goes down. Is mm. So it's aggressive. <laughs> yeah, it's very aggressive taper. I agree with that. So. But I like it. I like having, aggressive taper. Having talked about yeah, and I think it's a very important measurement. And that's when when you when you consider this, right? We always thought, okay, you have dial to diameter, right? You have luck width, you have the diameter itself, and of course the dial itself, you have the thickness. You have now one more thing, the mid case, and then how how well it's camouflaged, because the thickness. You can have, yeah. as you said, the speedy wears smaller or thinner than your sub, and it is actually much bigger, but it is I have very a story well about this. Ne I, I, I have a story to, about I, this. I mentioned one more thing to throw one more thing into the mix to make it even more complicated. How the case is shaped. Right. So my Pelagos, I just realized, is obviously the mid case tapers down on the ends, right? Yes. So that means it's a bit like, like a wrist. It's like a bit of, it has a bit of a curve. Of course, yep. the interior has this round shape, the case back, which is then slightly protruding, but that Ooh, goes into Look your, at this on the sub. Yeah, see? Uh, I don't know if you can see. No, the whole sub mid case is, is curved. Curved. So that. But on the Speedy, for instance, it's only the end links that go down, down a little yeah, bit, right? Correct. So. so that that also gives you the feeling of a very slim watch that really looks yeah. nice when you have the so-called barrel shot, as Tim also calls it, when you look down on your watch like this, right? Down your arm. And you see it's all flush with your thing. There's no air gaps on the ends mm -hmm. of the links and stuff. I had a watch that actually was supposed from all measurements, should have fitted me perfectly, but it was so straight and had such straight looks pointing outwards. Which it, watch was this? I don't know what it was. It was a not a breguet, something like that. Um, it looked really awkward on my wrist. It was awkward. Especially now, if you with rounder, rounder, um, rounder wrists, it's even worse because mine is relatively flat. So if it's broad enough, it's fine. But with rounder, rounder wrists, a straight watch like this looks awkward there's always these air right. gaps yeah. somewhere and it is just yeah. not cool it's just not cool yeah um all right i'm gonna tell you my story <laughs> of a watch that should have been by all intents and purposes perfect and it was not it was oh, far no. from it um and it was all down to measurements and once again these are measurements that i didn't know existed <laughs> So <laughs> yes. the watch in question was the Longines uh, Sector Dial, Heritage Sector Dial. Oh, right. I like I that I will watch, tell yeah. you the watch dimensions on paper. 
Case size should be perfect. Very nice, mm-hmm. perfect, right? Nineteen millimeter lug to uh, uh, lug width, mm-hmm. also very good. Forty seven mm lug to lug. Mm-hmm. Sure, why not? Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Um, and it was like a twelve and a half, thirteen millimeter thickness. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, no issues on any no, of these numbers. Should, should all be fine. So I bought it. I bought it from a guy in Abu Dhabi. Um, and I uh, paid like 4,000 dirhams for it, which was dirt cheap at the time, still is, um, for, a, you know, I think it was 8,500 retail. Um, so more, more than half off. And I put it on my wrist and I looked down and I'm like, Bleh. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? Like, okay. I'll give it some time. Uh-huh. So the first thing that stood out to me was 38.5. All dial, no bezel. Ah. The measurement of the dial itself was like 37 and a half from these 38.5. As I mentioned, when we measure my Speedy, which has already a gigantic dial, uh-huh. um, that one is measuring 34. Wow. So this was way, way too much glass. And it was a silver dial, which yeah. meant is just like, open and there was not very much going on in the dial so it was open and it was flat and it was plain as anything so that was the first issue it was just way too much expansive area that wasn't really covered this was a watch that should have been 36 mm and then it would have been perfect then Hmm. 13 millimeter height i'm like that that's not tall at all it was literally a flat watch with a 30 millimeter brick and then flat on top. There was zero um, shaping of the case side, <laughs> anything. It was mm-hmm. just a slab and it made Tudors look good. That's how oh. slab sided it was. And I was just like, this is hideous. And I thought to myself, how on earth can a designer make this and in their mind say, oh, look at this wonderful job that I've done. It was just so poorly yeah. designed. Yeah. And these are just watches that look so good, yet they just screw them up for one reason or another. Um, uh, Swatch Group loves to do this with a lot of things. They still believe big watches are the f- way forward. So they take a 34, 35 millimeter small watch from the, mm. you know, the, the 30s, 40s, 50s and blow it up to f- 39 millimeters and call it a day and say it's a redesign. Yeah. Um, it was just so horrible. And yeah. to kind of, you know, to boot, I have tons of watches in this size that are perfect with all of these dimensions. And this is why that glass, essentially the dial to bezel ratio yep. is important to me now, which I never thought about before until this watch, as well as not case height or, or I guess uh, uh, watch height, but mid case size. Yeah, that is also extremely important. Yeah, so you want a watch that hides its thickness, not just says it's this thick because the movement is this thick. That's it. Yes, no, it's it's. So yeah, this is one of the things when when the the Tudor what was it Tudor Pro Black Bay Pro came out the GMT version. Yeah, it was too. Th- yeah, and everybody said, oh, it's too thick. It depends, right? I mean, this is also one watch that uh, actually can sink a bit in your in your in your wrist, and it's the the crystal is no no but that was all mid case that was it, all mid case it is slap sided that's why it is if it, yeah but it yeah and now the new I just wanna, black bay 54 amazing what they did i wanted they to share broke up you, the mid yeah. case it's short it's small it's perfect I just wanted there to show you this one this is the sector dial longine this is the one that's you had. the one that i had yeah. yes so exactly. on my wrist because you see here the, the it's a long lug to lug right? it is very long yeah. so 30 or sorry 47 48 something around there yeah um, so it is very long. For its size, it wears much bigger. I would have, if you look at my wrist, I would have never guessed that this is only 38. 38.5. So 38. Yeah. yeah. So it's smaller than a Black Bay 58. And it's, it doesn't look like it because it's also, as you said, big dial, right? So here in, in comparison is a chunker 
A big chubby chunker. That's a eight. Send these two pictures over to me and I will put them in the Instagram <laughs> okay. because this is a very, very good description of same wa- uh, same wrist, two different watches. Completely. And then this is a this is a AP for every for the listeners, there's an AP Royal Oak Offshore Diver. So a chunk of a watch. It's tall. It's big. It's massive. But it doesn't it actually. It looks small. <laughs> look it looks great. How in right. the hell did Longines screw this up so badly? Yeah. It's 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 weird. And that's a Patek Philippe. I think it has a forty-one or forty millimeters. And it's a Langenzona. Oh, the all Langenzona looks tiny. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. And it's thirty-eight, I, I believe, I right? Think, thirty-eight yeah, mm on this one. Yeah. But it looks so. This is because, thirty-eight compared to the other Longines thirty-eight. Because, it's night and day. See the lugs? Yeah, there is basically no lugs. The the the, yeah, the strap actually short. touches the case really, right? So you yeah. can see that in here. I don't know why, but it's. I think it's curved. It's even. So I, just, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. But yeah, I'll send you the pictures. But yeah, but so it's such all... a good looking dial, though. Still, you show me, and I'm like, oh, it's a good looking. It dial. is. It is. And I was. That's why I tried it on because I thought, oh, man, it's really nice. Huh? So my point is, with all the measurements we can measure and we can look at, nothing beats just putting the watch on because. <laughs> it all yeah. might go out out of the window, or or you might actually think like, oh, okay, I can pull it off, right? Yeah, yeah. but but on the flip side, I also want to say, mm. I remember, I distinctly remember, when I was, I bought my sub, yeah, and I had two watches at the time. I had my sub and my speedy. Mm-hmm. Both are big watch. Actually, the two watches that I brought today, um, both are big watches for me for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, other people might consider them like they're not small by any stretch of the imagination. No. So I remember when I went to buy a date just that was going to be my third watch. And I knew I wanted a 36 millimeter date just, and I remember trying it on. Yeah. Um, and I remember trying it on in, this was in Thailand. So I was in Thailand probably 2016, 15, 16. Um, and I tried it on and I was thinking to myself like, Ugh, this is so tiny. Like, what is, the, this doesn't look good. Like, oh, I hate it so much. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up buying the the Datejust in 2019. Mm-hmm. And when I tried it on then, I don't know what had changed in my mind, but I was like, yeah, like this is proper <laughs> sized. So it's immensely huge. The difference is that your mind can kind of make up. Yeah, um, and then in addition to this, I had since looked back at the sub and said the sub was too big. And now kind of I, I've, I've get, gotten to the idea that there are watches in different sizes. I have two different sized watches uh-huh. in the collection. I have big watches, small watches. And then that's kind of it. And if I want to wear a small watch, yeah. I wear a small watch. If I want a big watch, a big watch. Um, and it kind of is okay. Yeah. But I still know that I can't go bigger than this. This is my absolute max. I've tried these bit bigger 42 millimeter watches, um, such as the FXD, which is a thin watch as well. Yeah. But with a 22 millimeter lug width, I cannot for the life of me. It won't sit comfortably. I can't do it. Yeah. It looks too big. Yeah, it's 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 insane because I, I recently uh I did one thing. I actually looked at my Super Ocean. Yeah, I think this mm-hmm. is a 42 millimeter case, but a small yep. dial. It's yeah. a very chunky watch. It's it's 1,500 meter water resistant, so it's really big. It has helium escape valve, but again, it's shaped according to your wrist, and it has the not too big mid case, so it doesn't look too big on my wrist. That's a 36 millimeter date just from my wife, Jubilee bracelet fluted dial, fluted dial with a palm dial. That's 36. Yep. I could get used to this. I could. Yeah. Immediately, it feels a bit on a smaller side, but you can get used to it. But you get used to it. Correct. You do. You can. That is a F Casio F91W that I'm showing now. This is a 33 millimeter watch. It's tiny, right? And if you have it in your hand, you think, do you have one? It's a toy. You have one? No, I, I wanted it's, to watch one. It, I wanted to buy one. It's yeah. so tiny and it's so light and it's so like, oh, it feels like really like a, like a toy. When you put it on your wrist, it's like, it actually is not too bad, even though it's tiny <laughs> once it's yeah. on the wrist, but it still feels very insubstantial, obviously, right? Because it weighs nothing as well, yeah, right? Exactly. It's 20 it's grams. Just like, you, you completely forget that it's there, right? You, you don't realize you have a watch on because it's so light and so plasticky and so soft and yeah, it's rubbery. 
you say. Is yeah. there a point to this story? My point is, again, I showed you now watches from 33 millimeters to 42 millimeters, 15 millimeters thick. No, you went bigger with the with the AP. The AP was even bigger than 42. I think it's 42 or 43, yeah. 43 or something, but it just doesn't- uh, I think look, it's bigger, no? Look like it, but also small dial. See again, it's a relatively small dial because there's a lot of octagonal and rehort and all of the stuff going on. So the actual no, dial- it's, it's 42, you're right, it's 42. It's 42, but the actual Dolph dial is tiny. See that? The, the, yeah. the dial is tiny compared to your um, to the longine. Uh, so dial aperture yeah. makes a huge, yes. huge difference yes, in does. sizing of a watch it does. or how it perceives to be. So that was the story. How big it perceives. Story to my, the story. Now, that from 33 um, to 42. We should, yeah. we should <clears throat> throw one more mm -hmm. plate of manure onto this entire discussion. <laughs> Square watches and rectangular watches oh, do not oh, wear the same oh. as their round equivalent. <laughs> oh my God, equivalent. we completely forgot about that. Yes, of course, the shape of the watch so, has an impact. So, yes, so far we talked about round shape. watches. Yes. That's it. But, for instance, but, but, I hey, have... Wait a second, wait a second. Then again, you have to say round watches, but then, for example, the, the one we just looked at, the Longines sector dial, is actually has only a round opening. The dial is round. Mm -hmm. The shape of the watch is more elongated because of yeah, the, elongated. If you have these, then that's getting into nitpicking. Yeah, but that's the what's it called? That's the lug to lug, which we kind yeah. of already talked about, right? Yeah. Some smaller watches Correct. can have really long lug to lug, which makes it seem like a more stretched out watch. Um, uh, one example Correct. of this Correct. Correct. is the uh, Black Bay Fifty Four compared to the Black Bay Fifty Eight. The Black Bay Fifty Eight, I always looked at as a round watch. The Black Bay 54, which came from 39 mm down to 37 in dial size, is now a long watch because they kept the same lug to lug. So they both have same lug to lug, which means lengthwise they're the same, but one is much less bulbous on the side than the other. So this made a huge difference on how the watch looked on the wrist. But Correct. now going into square watches, if you have a 38, 39 millimeter round watch, you might say that's small. Mm -hmm. That's some people say that's that's the optimal size, not too big, not too small. It's perfect. Well, I challenge you to go try on a 39 millimeter square case. Oh, yeah. Such as the Hoyer Monaco. Yeah. And let me know what you think, because that thing is absolutely gargantuan. Yes. It's not only super squarish, but it's also super tall. The Monaco. Yes. It's a really big one. I have done some maths <laughs> when it comes to this, by the way. Oh. So if we look at, uh, the, the, the idea would be looking at surface area, right? Surface area would give you a better understanding of what a watch size is, right? So if we look at a 38 millimeter um, square watch, that gives you a surface area of 1,444 centimeters or sorry millimeters squared right okay 38 times 38 if we look at a 38 millimeter um uh round watch so it was, it was pi r squared right um so that means it's a 19 millimeter um radius square that <laughs> multiply by pi all right all right, all right, all right. At least so you're before, knowing what you're doing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let me divide that by 1444. A 38 millimeter square dial, or sorry, a 38 millimeter uh, circular dial is 78% of the surface area of the equivalent square dial. So essentially, it's a quarter less. So if we wanted to put it that way, that means a, a uh, 38 millimeter uh, round dial, if you want to get up to the equivalent of a, what do we call it, a square, you would be roughly looking at somewhere in the vicinity of 46 millimeters, right? 46, if my mm. math is correct here, take 0.76 of that, now it's even more. You would be 47 mm, 48. Let's try a 48 mm. Uh, 0.76. We're still only at 37. 52 mm. Wow. 0.76. 
Yeah, 52, and you said that is your wrist uh, length, right? No, that would be the, no, no. My With list, yeah, my wrist length would be that. Yeah. 0.76. So that's a little bit. So it's going to be around a 49 mm. So a 38 millimeter yeah. square watch has the surface area of roughly, it's not exactly true because it's, the radius is squared. So it's not a linear relationship. But if we're just looking at percentage wise, then something around there. You're looking at like a 48 millimeter so watch. Now give me the summary. What does this number mean now exactly? The number is a square watch will wear a quarter larger. A quarter, a quarter larger. 25% uh, percent larger, larger than a round watch mm. with the same size. Yeah. So if you're looking at a 38 mm round watch, it's going to be 76% of the surface area of a square 38 by 38 millimeter watch. Right. Okay, that makes that makes so, a lot of sense. So because I tried on because I thought, oh yeah, you know, I have a, a big wrist. I need a big like the the what is it called the Santos, right? The Cartier Santos. I want a, I want the, the large, the large yeah. one. But then I put it on and I thought, ooh, that's very large. <laughs> so, it is. It is. And I thought oh, that's a that's it, it's, too it's, large. And then to yeah. boot, they they put that stupid date window in there as well. They really mm. medium is the perfect watch. And I think it's a and bit tall as well, especially the older one that I tried because it was a pre-owned one. Oh, the X one hundred one hundred X or Santa, whatever it's called, the Santos one hundred XL. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's XL. Yeah. yeah, that's a chunky watch. And and uh, it's a I looked monkey. at my list uh, wrist and I thought, nah, it's too much. It's it's too big. It it's is. Big. It is. It feels like these 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 gaudy Invictors, right? Which are just yeah, forty-seven millimeters, <laughs> super so tall. So I, I I don't know who in their right mind would buy a you know one of these large Santoses, Adrian, but, our good friend Adrian. <laughs> um, uh, but it's way too big, and I think it's ridiculous. But you know what? Um, I think it's it's also what you like because some people I saw this. We know I travel a lot to Africa, and you see on the African continent a lot of people like big watches. Because I I think that it's a way of going through the motions of of watching. It's watch a, a status symbol. Yeah. Because when the you bigger, don't the have more you see it. So, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, they 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 equate bigger with more expensive. Yeah. Exactly. And I think we have, we've gone through this as well in other uh, societies, right? When you just go through this phase where big watches equals lot of watch, and then eventually you become more refined in the taste, right? I think maybe uh, in general, but it's. Um, it's yeah, big but it and also gold. is. It, it takes a special type of individual, I think, to pull off a small watch. Right? You have to be, as you say, a refined individual. Right? I do not see someone going and buying a thirty-three millimeter, thirty-four millimeter vintage Patek no. uh, as a you know wrapper. And that's something that you have to kind of build up to. And I don't even know if I would wear a 33 millimeter, 34 See, millimeter men's Patek my, from, from, you know, the 1950s, yeah, but that's what yeah, they were. You know, we got my, my wife, uh, uh, she had a watch. She had a Blancpain perpetual calendar, solid gold, 35 millimeters. It was a man's mm -hmm. watch. It was a man's watch, but she wore it because yeah, yeah. nowadays that's a, it's a, it's a lady's size. Um, but it was designed as a man's watch and it was, it was very, very nice. But if I put this on my wrist, especially as well, because very big dial, um, it, very short lug to lug, it just did not look very nice on my wrist. It just looked like it's too small. But again, this is something that it was normal for men to wear. And um, yeah, what to do? Yep. Interesting. Interesting nonetheless. So but... the advice stands. All right. Try Take it your on. Measurements. Yeah, exactly. In the end, it's just that try it on. <laughs> no, there, so there is no the measurements. Thing Everything we've said in terms of measurements, yeah. we've also disproved <laughs> in some way or another. <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, these measurements are not some. They, you can use them as a guideline, as a stepping <laughs> stone. If somebody tells me, "Look at this uh, new watch. It's forty-five mm," I'm going to say, "You can shove it where the sun don't shine." Um, but that. You know, if somebody says, here's a 38 millimeter watch you might be interested in, yep. that doesn't tell me it's a green light or a red light, right? Yeah, it just correct, tells me, correct. okay, the door is now open. 
Yeah. And then I can go and figure out could whether work. this truly is something or not. Yeah. It could work. Exactly. Um, so once again, you didn't learn anything. We just rambled for 45 minutes and uh, we didn't <laughs> no, tell you I anything. Think in, you learned in a lot. Conclusive. You learned that don't trust just the measurements itself because you can easily disprove that and find a watch that has all the Goldilocks specifications you, you just had yeah. in your mind and it still doesn't look nice on your wrist. So try, try, try. And if you buy online, hopefully you have a return policy. <laughs> yes. Jeez. In case All right. something goes really so, wrong. So on that on that bombshell, I think yes, uh, we should lovely episode wrap it up, and we hear you next week. Thank you for listening. Exactly. Bye bye. Bye bye.